CWO has sent me a demo version of the new Seastar S30. First thing before I forget that I want to point out is when you buy one of these, you will get a carrying case with it. The demo units that went out to the reviewers did not get a carrying case, and I think you also get a sheet of stickers. I want some stickers. So I just want to start quickly with going over some of the specs. This is a 30 millimeter apochromatic system, which means it's got three pieces of ED extra low dispersion glass in it. You have 64 gig of onboard storage, approximately six hours of life on the battery on a full charge, and it comes with two built-in filters. One's a UV IR cut filter that you would use for like galaxies and reflection nebula. And the second one is a dual narrow band type of filter. So it's designed to keep light pollution out, but allow your HA and your O3 regions in. The telephoto lens is a Sony IMX662 sensor, which is 1080 by 1920 for the resolution. And there's also a wide field lens on the S30. So not only can you image with telephoto, you can shoot in wide field as well. And that also produces 1080 by 1920. As I mentioned before, it's a 30 millimeter meter aperture the focal ratio comes in at f5 and the focal length comes in at 150 millimeters the unit has bluetooth and wi-fi both 5 gigahertz as well as 2.4 gigahertz and there's also a usb type c port on the side of it that's used for charging you can use an external battery with it and you can also use that port to download the images and videos that you've taken onto your computer just a couple quick things just for those of you that are interested the operating temperature for the unit is minus 10 degrees celsius to 40 degrees celsius which is 14 degrees fahrenheit to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Weight comes in at 1.65 kilograms, which is three pounds and 10 ounces. And obviously it is a alt azimuth mount. So we're gonna do a quick unboxing, show you how to set up the app on your phone, get things going, play around some of the settings, show you what it's capable of. And a lot of people have been waiting for this. It's pre-order right now. I'll have links in the description for places that you can go to place that pre-order if you're interested. Like I said, ZWO has sent this to me. I think I get to keep it. I'm not really sure, but that doesn't matter. Just like any review I do, it's my opinion. They have no say so or what I, how I test it or what I say. So let's get to it. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. All right, so in the box, we have our instructions. Sea Star unit itself. That's, I knew this was gonna be small, but I didn't realize, I guess I didn't realize it was gonna be that small. Not that it's a bad thing. All right, and then over on the side here, we have another box. Looks like we have our magnetic solar filter, USB cable for charging the unit, and this is probably the tripod here on the bottom. So a nice little aluminum tripod. Looks to be completely aluminum. There's no plastic on here or anything that I could see. All right, so let's get the box out of the way and just take a quicker look at the unit itself. So we've got a little protective sticker over the lens, it looks like we got to get rid of. So there's the front of the unit. We'll get this plastic off of here. Oh, satisfying. Battery compartment, and then our connector for the tripod on the bottom of it. Obviously, it just screws right in there. And, you know, I like that this battery, I'm assuming this is the battery, so let's pop this open real quick. Yep, it is. So, it's nice that the battery is removable, right? Indicates to me that you could probably eventually be able to purchase an additional battery if this one was to ever stop holding a charge for you. So that's nice that it's accessible like that. It's like it used to be for the phones back in the old day, and then they stopped letting us replace our batteries easily enough. So, not much to talk about. We got a reset button on the bottom here. And that'll come into play when we're setting it up as well. So I am going to get the software installed, get it connected, and go from there. All right, so the first time that you power up the C-Star, you have to hit the power button one time for a second, let go, and then hold it in for two more seconds, and it'll power up for you. But after that, you only have to hold it in for two seconds to turn the unit on. You just need to do the short press, long press for the initial power up. <laughs> And don't know if you guys heard that, but default is speaking in Chinese. So I'm sure once we get everything set up with the app, it'll be in your native language. So I am running on Android. We'll launch the C-Star app and just walk through the process to get this thing set up. Hit the agree, allow C-Star to send notifications. So we'll say yes, allow, require location permission. We'll go over to our settings while using the app. Hit connect. It's asking me for permissions again. Say allow. There's the S30, so we're going to tap on connect. It's asking me to press the reset button on the bottom of the unit, which is right underneath here. 
activating C star activated. Got it. So this one is setting up the hotspot, the uh, the ad hoc network over Wi-Fi. So you can see the Wi-Fi name is the S30 underscore, and presumably the part of the MAC address. Uh, Wi-Fi password one two three four five six seven eight. We'll just hit copy Wi-Fi password and then open wireless LAN settings. There's the S30, and we'll just paste in the password. Like I said, one two three four five six seven eight, and hit connect. All right, so internet may not be available and that's expected, right? I'm now connected from my phone over Wi-Fi to the C-Star unit. And yes, we know there is no internet. So we're gonna click on stay connected and then we're gonna go back over to the C-Star app. And it appears we are connected. We got 51% on the battery, little green dot next to it. And let's just tap on open arm and see what we get. There it goes. Boy, this thing is quiet. Let's just turn it around here a little bit so you can see it easier. All right, cool. So let's just go through some of the settings that are in here. So the first thing I like to do with any new unit that I get is see if there is a, a firmware update available. I'm assuming not, usually they prompt you, but if you tap up on the C-Star name here on the top where it says S30 underscore, and let's just see what we have in here. So firmware, we're on 3.31, we'll tap on that, and we're up to date, so we're good to go, at least as of time of the recording. We can adjust our sound. Currently on low, we can go loud. I'll put it up. There we go, listen. Low volume. Loud volume. Okay, that's good. She's talking in English now. <laughs> uh, device info, it's just your model and serial number. Focus shows you the current focus position. That's kind of cool. 1,253 in the position for the focuser and the start focus position. Anti do, so you can turn that on so your lens doesn't fog up when you're below the dew point. Image watermark. I'm assuming the watermark is probably a C star stamp, but we'll leave that turned on since it's a default and see what happens. Advanced features. So let's jump into calibrate, adjust level. And I'm not real sure how you would adjust level on this small tripod because there are no adjustments on there, but let's see what happens. So please level your C star. Adjust the tri okay, so 0.6. I'm assuming green means we're good. Like if we were to tip this. Yeah. So there's not going to be any adjustments. You're going to have to make sure using the tripod that came with the unit that you're on a relatively level surface as it is. Green means good. Say finish adjusting. So, you know, if you can't set up on a level surface, I'm going to say you can't use the tripod that came with it. You're either going to have to put it on a standard tripod, which is absolutely possible, or, you know, <laughs> put some shims or something underneath the tripod legs to get you to where you need to be. So I guess it's good to be able to check it, but you're not really going to be able to adjust it with the default tripod that came with it. Compass calibration, we'll hit calibrate on that. And it's telling me that the compass deviation is too large. Please calibrate by just rotating the C-Star at least one turn as instructed. So we'll hit calibrate and just keep rotating it. We just keep doing this around and around until that green circle closes. And I'm inside doing this now, so probably best to do this outside, but it's raining right now. All right, complete. Level sensor calibration. Again, we can't really do any kind of leveling right now since we're using the small tripod that came with it. And then we got RTSP address. So that'll be a fun one to play with. We should be able to stream what we're seeing from the C-Star through another app on our phone and probably even over our Wi-Fi if we get this into station mode. So I could stream it in something like VLC player. And then there's also a guest mode. So if we go into there, you can see it's telling you it supports up to eight connections. One is currently connected, which is me. Uh, obviously. So what this allows you to do is you can have uh, somebody else, friend, family, whatever, take their phone, install the C-Star app and connect to it. And that'll just be in a read only mode. They'll be able to see the stack as it's coming down live. So that's kind of a fun way to share the screen with everybody. Instead of everybody hovering around your smartphone, you can allow seven other people to actually watch the image as it's coming down. All right, so let's go back over this way. We hit the settings button in the top right. And we just have our, our settings. We can manage our settings in here for notifications. Language, follow system, which just means whatever language you have in your phone, that's what it's gonna use. That's why I went from speaking Chinese to English. You can clear your cache, video decoder mode, just leave it at the recommended for the hardware. If you go software, it'll work obviously, but it's gonna probably be slower and really take a, take a toll on the processing. Back over to the main screen and down on the bottom, we come over to the very left that says C-Star. 
this is where we started from. It gives you a little weather report for your location. That's cool. The show me that we're 99% on the full moon today. And looks like just some articles, videos, and stuff at the bottom. Uh, if we go into our sky atlas, we can come up into objects and select what we want. Or we can search for it as well. So if we wanted to go to M31, we type on M31. Hit locate target position and off it would go. So it's daytime right now, so I can't test this. And I actually, I won't be able to test this tonight either. It looks like I'm going to be clouded out for at least a week, if not more. But I will get back to getting you guys some results for the deep space stuff. That's the Atlas. If you have an S50, you're already familiar with it. This app is the same app that is used for the S50. So the, the, both units will do the same thing as far as software is concerned. The only difference with the S30 is the hardware and the, and the form factor, obviously. You can set your framing. It looks like we have some magnification. And it shows you how long the shooting duration will be based on what your magnification is set to. And then we also have rotation so you can rotate your field of view as well. Again, I'll get outside my next clear night and play with all of these settings and show you guys actually how it's going to work. So like I said, I'm clouded out. So the only thing I can really test right now is the scenery mode for daytime stuff. So we'll get outside and take some shots using that mode. So I'm just going to show you guys how the scenery mode works you know, during the day outside landscape type stuff. We can not only do imaging, but we can also do video and time lapse. So I'm just going to run through how you set that up and how you do that. Once you have the app connected to the C-Star, just tap your scenery mode button give it a second to load up and you can see in the top left window here that is our wide field view and then the main screen is our actual telephoto view so the small circle in the middle of the screen if you just lay your thumb on it you'll have your controls you can see you have slow and fast and just by leaving my thumb on that control I can go up and down and using the, the wide field view up in the top left corner, find what it is that I want to zoom up on for the main view. We'll just go over here to the observatory. There's not too many things interesting to be looking at through this. So you can see the crosshair is on the observatory in the wide field. And then in the main view of the screen, that is our telephoto lens. So we can use both as a way to get close to where we want to be. Actually, let's get over here on the alien a little bit. Once you have your object in view, down in the bottom right hand corner the button that says AF is our autofocus so we'll tap that Autofocusing. give it a few minutes to go auto back and forth completed. it says autofocus is completed it does look like it's nice and sharp if by chance the autofocus doesn't work for you and I haven't had any issues with it but if you feel like you need to dial it in a little bit more if you come up here to the top right corner of the app where the three dots are the ellipses and tap on that you have a mf panel that's your manual focus so if you turn that switch on you can see on the left hand side here now the 1395 is the actual current focus position and you can adjust that back and forth yourself manually i'm going to leave it alone right now because the autofocus appears to have done a good job so we'll turn that panel back off and we are currently in photo mode as you can see in the bottom here so it's as simple as just hitting the button and taking a picture you can see in the bottom left hand corner it has put it into our gallery tap it again and there's the picture that we just took sea star s30 you can see the watermark down on the left hand side i mentioned that earlier so before we go any further let's go back into our settings and turn off that watermark so again either tap on the s30 name or just the image itself there's our image watermark turn that off and let's go back in to scenery mode take another picture and then we'll go back into our gallery and this time the watermark is gone you can also do video go over into video mode start recording you can actually pan around using the controls as you're creating your video hit stop it says it save the video again we'll go back into the gallery this time if you look on the top where it says saved we're going to go over to c star because the video is actually recorded on the internal storage of the unit itself then we'll tap on the icon once tap on it a second time and it'll start playing for us so there's our video then we can also do a time lapse so let's let's get up into the trees like i said there's not much going on back in the backyard here the wind is blowing, so maybe we can just do a time lapse of uh, the branches and the trees. Things are moving. We'll hit our autofocus. Autofocus completed. All right, and then down where we have video selected, I'm going to scroll over to the right until we get the time lapse. You can see default right now on the left hand side there, that button says one second. If you tap that, you can do 30 second exposure. So again, it's a time lapse. So if we take it to say two seconds and start the time lapse, so we'll hit the record button. You just let that run for as long as you want. You got a count right above the button. We're on 
on the fourth exposure right now the fifth exposure just let that go for however long that you would like once you're satisfied this is going to be a pretty short one but hit your stop button again it saves it to your c star and you can come over to the c star and view it here and that was really quick but you can see that it did create a time lapse for us as fast as that is but just wanted to show you real quick um also while you're in here if you wanted to delete this you can see you have your buttons down here on the bottom you can hit your delete button to delete the file a button over on the right will allow you to download it or export it out to share it directly to facebook or text it to somebody or email it whatever you want to do the community button is c stars community that they have that you can sign up for where everybody uploads their images and shares what they've done with the unit all right, so the other thing that you can do is actually track objects. So, and I'm gonna do this one with using the wide field camera because you can take pictures and record video and time lapses in the wide field as well as the telephoto. So I'm gonna switch over to my wide field. I'm gonna hit my little icon down on the bottom with the man in the box. It gives me quick directions to draw a square around the object that I wanna track. And we'll just draw it right around the side by side. Switch over the video, hit record, and I'm gonna go jump in and drive it across the yard and see what happens. All right, that worked. And again, it saved the video so we can go over into the C-Star storage and watch it right from the storage device. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit here until I get in it. There it goes. So I hope that was helpful for you. I know we didn't do any astrophotography with it, but like I said, I am completely clouded out. It looks like a week and a half, maybe even two weeks. So that was my option. Either put the video out now without the astro stuff in it or give it almost two weeks before I maybe get clear sky so I can do something like that. I didn't want to wait that long. So I will be putting out another video next clear night that I have running it through its paces for the astro stuff so we'll go over everything astro as soon as i get a clear night so if you're interested in catching that video when i release it make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell that way you'll be alerted when the video does come out if you have any questions anything you'd like to see me test when i do have a clear night and start messing around with the astro photography side of things leave a comment below i want to thank all my members both here on youtube and on buymeacoffee.com appreciate you guys supporting the channel so that wraps things up as always i appreciate everybody's time we'll see you on the next video and clear skies